Hello, I'm Atubo George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Can we make demands for our daily bread? Are you ready? Are you ready to receive today? Join me right now and say, Father, I demand from you my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Luke chapter 18 and verse 1. Praise God. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Now I was telling you the benefit of prayer. It begins to fine-tune your mind. Prayer fine-tunes your mind. And, and, and this brings us to when you pray, most times, see, people pray and all they are looking for is the outward answer to their prayer. So, oh God, give me money. Oh God, give me money. Oh God, give me money. And then they are waiting to see an alert on their phone. They are waiting for a phone call. Oh, money has come. That's what they are waiting for. Now, that doesn't mean God has answered your prayer. Oh, but, but, but the money came. Yes, the money may come, but it doesn't mean God has answered your prayer. Listen. The way to know that your prayer has been answered is words. The word of God will come to you. There are different levels of answers we receive. I told you a few days ago, I said, angels listen to our conversation. Angels hear us when we pray. There are angels that are stationed here with us. Okay? And there are angels that visit us from heaven. Now, these angels have various capacity in their operations. Now, there are, even with you, there are several angels that God has placed to work with you. Now, like I, I was sharing testimony between uh, my wife and I and how we received a bag of rice. We, we were discussing and I said, angels had the discussion and they made arrangements. But you see, I can be praying for supply. But what's my real prayer? Lord, I'm tired of living this kind of life from hand to mouth. Lord, I'm tired. Now, that hand to mouth doesn't really mean you go begging people. It, it just means that you receive, you know, little, 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 little. Maybe your job, by the time your salary comes in and you have to pay this bill, pay that bill, you still struggle through the month. So you just have enough to go by, okay? And then you, you, you look at that kind of life and you begin to talk to the Lord about it. You say, Lord, I'm tired. So what do you do? You get into prayer. Now when you're praying that kind of prayer, don't be expecting an alert of one big money. You see, if your mind is going in that direction, Satan is distracting you. Because you know how you'll be praying. Your mind can your mind can wander. You're praying, Ashak, oh God, just give you it might even be thinking, God, just give me one big job like that. I'll just swallow all my needs. No, that's not what you need. At least now, that's not what you need. No, pastors, but you don't understand. I mean, what else do I need? I, I'm earning this amount of money. And truly, with my qualification, I can actually get a job that will pay me in dollars or pay me in, pay me some good, good, good money. Pay me six figures, you know, and, and, and I'll be fine. If I'm earning six figures, come on, what is my what are my needs? Uh, well, I say what you don't know is the reason your pay increases, your needs will increase naturally. People who had thought a better job would solve the problem, they got the better job. And a few months down the line, they are looking for another better job. What happened to you? It's just normal. If your supply increases, your needs increase. You understand what I'm saying? Oh, yes. Let's say you're earning 100,000 every month. You will construct your needs to, to be around that amount of money. It will affect the kind of food you eat. 
Not because you don't have appetite for better things, but sometimes you're driving by a restaurant and you look at the restaurant and like, whoa, I, I love this place. But then you remember that the plate of food there is 20,000. And then you go, nice, 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 nice. But I tell you the truth. If you get to work tomorrow and they say, oh, look, um, we've decided to review your pay and now you'll be earning 500,000 every month, from 100,000 to 500,000. I believe the first day you receive that pay, you might most likely you stop by that restaurant. You see, now that's not what you would do when you were earning. I get what I'm saying. But now you just be passing, say, hey, stop. Hey, 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 I'm going in there. Why? Because you feel you can afford it now. But what you don't realize is it is all, all those things that are reducing your pay back to that same 100,000. <laughs> yes. You think you can afford it now. But what you don't realize is that at the end of the day, you're still the same person. So in a few months time, you start asking yourself, what do I spend money on? But by then you've gotten accustomed to this better life. Like they say on the street, the soft life. You've become accustomed to it. As a guy, even where you cut your hair will change. Nah, nah. You see that place I used to go to? The guy used to charge me 200. Nah, nah. Let me go to that salon where they charge 2,000 or 5,000 just to cut your hair. Yes. The people you relate with will begin to change. Now people will ah, no, wow. What are you doing there? Ha. Ah, you don't know who you are. Somebody will just make that suggestion. And then soon you begin to look at your friends and begin to think that ah, we're not on the same level, truly. We're not on the same level. And let me start rolling with the higher level of people. Rolling with the higher level of people will cost you more. Then soon you begin to think that this car I use does not befit. Uh -huh. All those things will now make you like, I'm tired, I'm tired. So you see, Having a new job or having some big money come to you doesn't solve the problem. Now you begin to pray and pray and pray. What are you praying about? I'm helping you. I'm guiding you. You're praying about a change of personality. You're praying that God should graduate you from where you are to a better place. Okay? Now, a praying and praying. That prayer is not one moment prayer. It's not, oh God. That's why I said, tune your mind. The prayer is to change you. It's not to cause money to enter into your account. The prayer is to change you. It's to change you. So you begin to pray. Lord, I, I move from this level that I'm in. I move from this level that I'm praying. I grow, I increase. I increase in the name of Jesus. You're praying and praying and praying. This will take hours, this will take days, this will take weeks. So how do I know God has answered me? I tell you, you see, why does it take so long? Because there is an operation that has to take place in you. And that operation doesn't take a moment. There is a change of mindset that must take place in you. Now, what's going on? As you're praying, words will begin to come to your heart. Wisdom will begin to come to you. God will begin to see because the, the foundation that will sustain what you are asking for has to be built. So you're praying and praying and praying and praying and praying and praying. Then suddenly you hear the word of the Lord say, Going forward, I call it. You know, that's why you hear me say things like, there is nobody, I, I, I challenge you, there is nobody who genuinely lives by faith where finances is concerned that will not tight. 
There is no one. Listen to me. I said there is nobody who lives by faith with where finances is concerned who will not tithe. Why? When I say live by faith, you see, these days it's easy when you're a preacher and you're, 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 you have a church, you're a pastor. It's easy for, to find people give to you, okay? But you see, those, you see those kind of people, if you're not sure that the structure, if you don't live your life outside the people, because as a pastor, you have a congregation of 1,000, even 500 people. There is just this natural attraction, you know, that every time they gather, someone will just say, oh, let me get something for my pastor. Oh, let me send money to my pastor. You preach a message, like, ah, this message is good. I'm so happy. What do I do? Let me give pastor a gift. But you don't live by those things. You don't live every day telling yourself, God, oh, today, ah, let somebody help me. Lord, I need, I need one million naira today in service today. You must go. You must live beyond your congregation. I'm telling you, you must live beyond your congregation. Because the limiting factor in that is this. A day will come where God may command you out of that congregation. Or a day will come, maybe in your old age, you will not be able to preach like you're preaching right now. And so you're detached from that congregation. Then you become stranded. And now you begin to find ways. That's not when you want to start finding ways. So I'm teaching how to build. Now, now you're praying and, 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 and God speaks to you. I say, how do you know he has answered you? You will hear a command from the Lord in your place of prayer. You will hear the Lord begin to say, from henceforth, every money you receive, the first thing you must do, and I said the first thing you must do is to take out the tithe from it. Now you go, eh, but I used to tithe. Now you now understand the command difference. The first thing you must do. Now, the word will just come to your heart. Like, oh, why is God telling me about this? Uh-huh. Yes, Lord. At first, you may not even understand. But the more you pray and pray and pray, and understanding will begin to come to you. You'll begin to see, oh, honor, honor. Yeah, God is actually teaching me how to honor Him. Oh, no wonder the Bible says, honor the Lord with your substance. I see. I've been tithing, but I've not been doing it in honor. Oh. Now, what's going on? The Lord is building the foundation that we carry. And you're praying and praying, and then the Lord speaks again. He'll begin to give instructions. He'll begin to give instructions. And you'll see that those instructions are not just a one time instruction. It's not the kind of instruction that, that will say, Go and sow this seed into Susan's so presence. So that, no. that, those kind of instructions come at the later end when, when He has finished with you. Then He will now give you one instruction that you will do now. I'm telling you the truth. He might tell you, empty your bank account and go and give to this one. Hmm. Okay, sir. Okay, Lord. And then you give. And when that happens, I'm using finances now. That's something everybody can relate with. Now, when you're done with that, what has happened to you? He has brought you to a new level. Guess what will happen to you? Easily. Without you pursuing it, without you requesting, without you praying, without you asking, things will just begin to come to you. Then you will notice. You might be walking somewhere and, and, and this is your pay. You will now begin to notice that sometimes I go halfway into the month. I don't even spend my 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 salary like, what's happening because you now realize that somebody just walks up to you and say hey i see you um, around to so and so place maybe you don't even have a car you see i always see around to so and so place almost every day like what 
Oh, I work there. Oh, you work there? I don't wonder. I work there too. Like, oh, really? Where do you work? Ah, oh, that's just opposite my building. I said, oh, yeah. So, ah, I mean, how do you go to work every day? Oh, I take a car. Ah, oh, come on now. When I have a car, let me be dropping every day. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. I go, wow, wow, this is nice. Now, you didn't ask for it. You didn't ask for this. I'm teaching how God operates. So every day this person takes you to, and sometimes you're just like, oh, why don't you take this for free? Oh, come on now, ah, let it not be as though, no, I'm just being, ah, no, 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 I don't like it. Ah, I don't like it. Don't spoil our friendship. <laughs> okay. Even with that, you know, you're thinking, ah, because God has worked in you. So you're not looking at it that, ah, I'm taking advantage of it. No, God has worked on you. So you are operating under the system. It is more blessed to give than to receive. So you still begin to find ways to be a blessing to that person. So at weekends, you just feel, like, oh, let me buy fruits and just go visit this person. Or oh, some provisions, just like, ah, man, I just came to visit you. How's your family? How's how you do? How are you? Oh, thank you. God bless you. You know. Yeah. That also is a seed that you sow. Now, guess what God have done to you? What you normally, the bulk money you normally spend on your transportation, erased. But that's not even where he's taking you to. He's just preparing you for where he's taking you to. Because now you don't have your own car. You, 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 every day, you know. And then you say, ah, Man, I need to visit the mechanical. The person says, you, you guys are driving and having, uh, what's the matter? The, the, the legs of my car, there's something, there's something. Oh, okay. So what are they going? Oh, there's this, this, this. You're learning about cars. You're learning about cars. Like, oh, so you now know that uh, when you have a car, you have to service it at this point. You have to do this. Thing. How much you buy your oil? Oh, this. Oh, really? Yeah. Ah, okay. It's there in your mind. All those things you're being built up. Now the spiritual build up have taken place. Now the physical build up is happening. I'm telling you the truth. And then the next thing someone calls you, oh, um, you know, this is, you just realize that God is doing something and these things come with ease. The same thing with your health. You might be struggling with, 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 with an ailment. And it's been there for years. And sometimes what you want, I'm going to pray that sickness will go. And you pray, 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 pray. I, I, I command, I bind, I destroy in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, it may go. It may go. But guess what? It may come back. So what do you do? Lord, I'm not supposed to be suffering this. And I know that there is a place in you that this will disappear. And then you begin to pray and pray and pray. You can take a whole period in your life and you're praying and praying and praying and praying and praying. You will see that instruction from the Lord concerning. After, see, you will always, how that's how you know God is working. You will always hear him tell you. It is when the word of God comes to you. But guess what he's just done to you now? He didn't just remove the sickness from your body. He, he, he walks on your body to reject that sickness. Yes, he did that. That's it. He walked on your body. Now your body itself now has the knowledge and technology that anytime that sickness is about to attach itself to you, it will resist it. So you build immunity in God, even in your physical body. Now, this is the same thing with everything. You are in ministry. It's the same thing. Oh, I want to grow my church. Okay, so what do I do? Let's start doing some serious social media publicity. No, sir. No. You will do social media. Uh, 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 what's it called now? 
um, social media advertisement. You will do all those kind of publicity and your church will be filled with people that will be giving you a headache. Every day, you know, what kind of thing is this? Yeah, what kind of thing? You'll be looking for where to run to. What do you do? Father, we've we'll been on this level for so long. I think we can move higher. Then you begin to pray and pray and pray and pray and pray and pray. Hear me? The first thing that must happen is that you be built up. So how do I know I've been built up? The instructions you begin to receive from the Lord. Those instructions are to weigh you. Okay? So God will teach you, teach you, teach you. And he'll give you instruction. Begin to do this. You know, God can tell you, begin to wake up every 12 midnight and pray. Yes, sir. Ah, I will do it. You try it for one week. After one week, you forgot. There's a reason. You now realize for the past two weeks, you've not prayed. Hey, you know, God told me you were praying every 12 midnight. Ah. Oh, I'll start again. I'll start again. And then after three days, something happens. There's a phone call, like very important phone call around that 11.55. And then you continue with that phone call until 1 p.m., 1 a.m. Very important phone call. The next day, activities, activities, activities. You know what that is proving? You are not ready. The situation just proved that you are not ready. But when, when you now practice and practice and practice, God says, be praying every 12 minutes. That's the instruction you receive. Be praying every 12 minutes. Now you know that. You get to that point where you're like, whatever you're doing, the moment is 10. <sighs> Lord, I have come. Shalabaya. You don't even know what to pray for. Lipatakata. Repeketenene. Enando silabira. Reendo komana. Enongroniskepea. Oh, someone calls you on the phone and you're talking like, hey, sorry, it, 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 it's my prayer time. Oh, it's a, uh, uh, can we pray together? Ah, no, 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 no. I'll talk to you tomorrow. You go, oh, Lord, I have come. Because that's not the prayer time we share with anyone. Sheta kumana, bread ten, ask the mina. God says, okay. Now, he's fixed a schedule of prayer. I'll be using that schedule to deal with with the congregation he's demanding for. Uh -huh. Brothers and sisters, God is working on your personality. He's working on creating a being. You want to get married. You're confused. You don't know who to marry. No, there are people like that. Especially guys. A few sisters get into that. You don't know who to marry. Can you build yourself first? Oh, Father, show me my husband. Oh, God, show me. No, 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 Lord. This marriage matter. I want to get married. Sabi ato paro. Pantumre et vila. Reketa papa. God will stand there. You will receive instructions. If those instructions are not coming, you are not prepared yet. My time is up. I'll see you tomorrow. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.